Don Vasco da Gama, first Count of Vidigueira, was a Portuguese explorer. He is one of the most famous and celebrated explorers from the Age of Discovery, being the first European to reach India by sea. This discovery was significant and paved the way for the Portuguese to establish a long-lasting colonial empire in Asia. The route meant that the Portuguese would not need to cross the highly disputed Mediterranean nor the dangerous Arabian Peninsula, and that the whole voyage would be made by sea. After decades of sailors trying to reach India with thousands of lives and dozens of vessels lost in shipwrecks and attacks, Gama landed in Calicut on May 20, 1498. Reaching the legendary Indian spice routes unopposed helped the Portuguese Empire improve its economy that, until Gama, was mainly based on trades along northern and coastal West Africa. These spices were mostly pepper and cinnamon at first, but soon included other products, all new to Europe which led to a commercial monopoly for several decades. Gama headed two of the armadas destined for India, the first and the fourth, the biggest armada, only four years after his arrival from the first one. For his contributions he was named in 1524 as the Governor of India, under the title of Viceroy, and given the newly created County of Vidigueira in 1519. Numerous homages have been made worldwide in Vasco da Gama's honor for his explorations and accomplishments. He remains a leading exploration figure to this day. The Portuguese national epic, Os Lusidas, was written to celebrate Vasco da Gama. His first trip to India is widely considered a pinnacle of world history as it marked the beginning of the first wave of global multiculturalism. Early Life Vasco da Gama was born 1460 or 1469 in Sines, on the southwest coast of Portugal, probably in a house near the church of Nossa Senhora das Las. Sines, one of the few seaports on the Alentejo coast, consisted of little more than a cluster of whitewashed, red-tiled cottages, tenanted chiefly by fish and folk. Vasco da Gama's father was Estevar Pando da Gama, who had served in the 1460s as a knight of the household of Infranti Ferdinand, Duke of Vizu and went on to rise in the ranks of the military order of Santiago. Estevar Pando da Gama was appointed Alcade Marcubdar of Signs in the 1460s, a post he held until 1478, and continued as a receiver of taxes and holder of the order's commenders in the region. Estevar Pando da Gama married Isabel Sodra Copyright, a daughter of Joe Pando Sodra Copyright, scion of a well-connected family of English origin. Her father and her brothers, Vicente Sodra Copyright and Bra Sodra Copyright, had links to the household of Infranti Diogo, Duke of Visu and were prominent figures in the military order of Christ. Vasco da Gama was the third of five sons of Estevar Pando da Gama and Isabel Sodra Copyright a Euro in order of age, Paulo da Gama, Joe Pando Sodra Copyright, Vasco da Gama, Pedro da Gama and Iris da Gama. Vasco also had one known sister, Teresa da Gama. Little is known of Vasco da Gama's early life. The Portuguese historian Teixeira de Aragapando suggests that Vasco da Gama studied at the inland town of Apermelvora, which is where he may have learned mathematics and navigation and it has even been claimed that he studied under the astronomer Abraham Zacuto. Around 1480, Vasco da Gama followed his father and joined the Order of Santiago. The master of Santiago was Prince John, who would ascend to the throne in 1481 as King John II of Portugal. John II doted on the order, and the Gama's prospects rose accordingly. In 1492, John II dispatched Vasco da Gama on a mission to the port of Setúbal and to the Algarve to seize French ships in retaliation for peacetime depredations against Portuguese shipping a Euro a task that da Gama rapidly and effectively performed. Exploration before Gama, from the earlier part of the 15th century Portuguese expeditions organized by Prince Henry the Navigator had been crawling down the African coastline, principally in search of West African riches. They had greatly extended Portuguese maritime knowledge, but had little profit to show for the effort. After Henry's death in 1460, the Portuguese crown showed little interest in continuing and, in 1469, sold off the neglected African enterprise to a private Lisbon merchant consortium led by Ferner Pound O. Gomez. Within a few years, 
Gomez's captains expanded Portuguese knowledge across the Gulf of Guinea, doing business in gold dust, Mlaguita pepper, ivory and slaves. When Gomez's charter came up for renewal in 1474, Prince John, asked his father Afonso V of Portugal to pass the African charter to him. Upon becoming king in 1481, John II of Portugal set out on many long reforms. To break the monarch's dependence on the feudal nobility, John II needed to build up the royal treasury, and saw royal commerce as the key to it. Under John II's watch, the gold and slave trade in West Africa was greatly expanded. He was eager to break into the highly profitable spice trade between Europe and Asia. At the time, this was virtually monopolized by the Republic of Venice, who operated overland routes via Levantine and Egyptian ports, through the Red Sea across to the spice markets of India. John II set a new objective for his captains, to find a sea route to Asia by sailing around the African continent. By the time Vasco da Gama was in his twenties, these plans were coming to fruition. In 1487, John II dispatched two spies, Piero da Cavilla Pound and Afonso de Pava, overland via Egypt, to East Africa and India, to scout the details of the spice markets and trade routes. The breakthrough came soon after when John II's captain Bartolomeu Diaz returned from rounding the Cape of Good Hope in 1488, having explored as far as the Fish River in modern-day South Africa and having verified that the unknown coast stretched away to the northeast. It remained for an explorer to prove the link between the findings of Diaz and those of Da Cavilla Pound and De Pava and to connect these separate segments into a potentially lucrative trade route into the Indian Ocean. The task, originally given to Vasco da Gama's father, was finally offered to Vasco by Manuel I on the strength of his record of protecting Portuguese trading stations along the African Gold Coast from depredations by the French. First voyage on July 8, 1497 Vasco da Gama led a fleet of four ships with a crew of 170 men from Lisbon. The distance travelled in the journey around Africa to India and back was greater than around the equator. The navigators included Portugal's most experienced, Piero de Alenca, Pedro Escobar, Joe Pound Oda Coimbra, and Afonso Gona Section Alves. It is not known for certain how many people were in each ship's crew but approximately 55 returned, and two ships we lost. Two of the vessels were as mouse or newly built for the voyage, possibly a caravel and a supply boat. The four ships were The Tsar Poundo Gabriel, commanded by Vasco da Gama. A carrack of 178 tons, length 27 meters, width 8.5 meters, draft 2.3 m. Sales of 372 Ma squared, the Tsar Pound O Raphael, whose commander was his brother Paulo da Gama. Similar dimensions to the Tsar Pound O Gabriel, the Caraval Berrio, slightly smaller than the former two, commanded by Niccolo Canaljo, a storage ship of unknown name, commanded by Gona Section Alu Nuns, later lost near the Bay of Tsar Pound O Braos, along the east coast of Africa, journey to the Cape. The expedition set sail from Lisbon on July 8, 1497. It followed the route pioneered by earlier explorers along the coast of Africa via Tenerife and the Cape Verde Islands. After reaching the coast of present-day Sierra Leone, da Gama took a course south into the open ocean, crossing the equator and seeking the South Atlantic westerlies that Bartolomeu Diaz had discovered in 1487. This course proved successful and on November 4, 1497, the expedition made landfall on the African coast. For over three months the ships had sailed more than 6,000 miles of open ocean, by far the longest journey out of sight of land made by that time. By December 16, the fleet had passed the Great Fish River a Euro, where Diaz had turned back a Euro, and sailed into waters previously unknown to Europeans. With Christmas pending, da Gama and his crew gave the coast they were passing the name Natal, which carried the connotation of birth of Christ in Portuguese. Mozambique, Vasco da Gama spent 2 to March 29, 1498 in the vicinity of Mozambique Island. Arab-controlled territory on the East African coast was an integral part of the network of trade in the Indian Ocean. Fearing the local population would be hostile to Christians, da Gama impersonated a Muslim and gained audience with the Sultan of Mozambique. 
with the paltry trade goods he had to offer, Dargama was unable to provide a suitable gift to the ruler and soon the local populace became suspicious of Dargama and his men. Forced by a hostile crowd to flee Mozambique, Dargama departed the harbour, firing his cannons into the city in retaliation. Mombasa, in the vicinity of modern Kenya, the expedition resorted to piracy, looting Arab merchant ships a euro generally unarmed trading vessels without heavy cannons. The Portuguese became the first known Europeans to visit the port of Mombasa 7 to April 13, 1498, but were met with hostility and soon departed. Malindi, Vasco da Gama continued north, arriving at the friendlier port of Malindi on April 14, 1498 a euro, whose leaders were then in conflict with those of Mombasa euro, and there the expedition first noted evidence of Indian traders. Dargama and his crew contracted the services of a pilot whose knowledge of the monsoon winds allowed him to bring the expedition the rest of the way to Calicut, located on the southwest coast of India. Sources differ over the identity of the pilot, calling him variously a Christian, a Muslim, and a Gujarati. One traditional story describes the pilot as the famous Arab navigator Ibn Majid, but other contemporaneous accounts place Majid elsewhere and he could not have been near the vicinity at the time. Also, none of the Portuguese historians of the time mention Ibn Majid. Vasco da Gama left Malindi for India on April 24, 1498. Calicut, India. The fleet arrived in Kapadu near Calicut, India on May 20, 1498. The king of Calicut, the Samudari, who was at that time staying in his second capital at Puanani, returned to Calicut on hearing the news of the foreign fleet's arrival. The navigator was received with traditional hospitality, including a grand procession of at least 3,000 armed Nyas, but an interview with the Zamorin failed to produce any concrete results. The presents that Da Gama sent to the Zamorin as gifts from Don Manuela Euro four cloaks of scarlet cloth, six hats, four branches of corals, twelve almazares, a box with seven brass vessels a chest of sugar, two barrels of oil and a cask of honey a euro were trivial, and failed to impress. While Zamorin's officials wondered at why there was no gold or silver, the Muslim merchants who considered Dar Gama their rival suggested that the latter was only an ordinary pirate and not a royal ambassador. Vasco da Gama's request for permission to leave a factor behind him in charge of the merchandise he could not sell was turned down by the king, who insisted that Da Gama pay customs duty a euro preferably in gold a euro like any other trader, which strained the relation between the two. Annoyed by this, Da Gama carried a few nyas and sixteen fishermen off with him by force. Nevertheless, Da Gama's expedition was successful beyond all reasonable expectation, bringing in cargo that was worth sixty times the cost of the expedition. Return Vasco da Gama left Calicut on August 29, 1498. Eager to set sail for home, he ignored the local knowledge of monsoon wind patterns which were still blowing on shore. The fleet initially inched north along the Indian coast, and then anchored in at Anjadeva Island for a spell. They finally struck out for their Indian Ocean crossing on October 3, 1498. But with the winter monsoon yet to set in, it was a harrowing journey. On the outgoing journey, sailing with the summer monsoon wind, it had taken Gama's fleet only 23 days to cross the Indian Ocean. Now, on the return trip, sailing against the wind, it took 132 days. Vasco da Gama saw land again only on January 2, 1499, alighting before the coastal Somali city of Mogadishu, then under the influence of the Ajuran Empire in the Horn of Africa. They did not make a stop. But passing before Mogadishu, the anonymous diarist of the expedition noted that it was a large city with houses of four or five stores high and big palaces in its center and many mosques with cylindrical minarets. Vasco da Gama's fleet finally arrived in Malindi on January 7, 1499, in a terrible shape a euro approximately half of the crew had died during the crossing, and many of the rest were afflicted with scurvy. Not having enough crewmen left standing to manage three ships, Vasco da Gama ordered the Tsar Pound o Rafael scuttled off the East African coast, and the crew redistributed to the remaining two ships, the Tsar Pound o Gabriel and the Berrio. Thereafter, the sailing was smoother. By early March, 
they had arrived in Mossel Bay, and crossed the Cape of Good Hope in the opposite direction on March 20. They reached the West African coast by April 25. The diary record of the expedition ends abruptly here. Reconstructing from other sources, it seems they continued to Cape Verde, where Niccolo Canaljo's Berrio separated from Vasco da Gama Zar Pando Gabriel, and sailed on by itself. The Berrio arrived in Lisbon on July 10, 1499 and Niccolo Canaljo personally delivered the news to King Manuel I and the royal court, then assembled in Sintra. In the meantime, back in Cape Verde, Vasco's brother, Paulo da Gama had fallen grievously ill. Gama elected to stay by his side on Santiago Island, and handed the Tsar Poundo Gabriel over to his clerk, Joe Poundo de Tsar, to take home. The S. Gabriel and de Tsar arrived in Lisbon sometime in late July or early August. Vasco da Gama and his sickly brother eventually hitched a ride with a Guinea Caraval returning to Portugal, but Paulo da Gama died en route. Vasco da Gama got off at the Azores to bury his brother at the monastery of Tsar Poundo Francisco in Angra do Heroismo, and lingered there for a little while in mourning. Vasco da Gama eventually took passage on an Azorean caravel and finally arrived in Lisbon on August 29, 1499, or early September. Despite his melancholic mood, Vasco da Gama was given a hero's welcome, and showered with honours including a triumphal procession and public festivities. King Manuel wrote two letters in which he described Vasco da Gama's first voyage, in July and August 1499, soon after the return of the ships. Girolamo Sanji also wrote three letters describing the first voyage of Vasco da Gama soon after the return of the expedition. The expedition had exacted a large cost a Euro one ship and over half the men had been lost. It had also failed in its principal mission of securing a commercial treaty with Calicut. Nonetheless, the spices brought back on the remaining two ships were sold at an enormous profit to the crown. Vasco da Gama was justly celebrated for opening a direct sea route to Asia. His path would be followed up thereafter by yearly Portuguese Indian armadas. The spice trade would prove to be a major asset to the Portuguese royal treasury, and other consequences soon followed. For example, Gama's voyage had made it clear that the east coast of Africa, the Contra Costa, was essential to Portuguese interests. Its ports provided fresh water, provisions, timber, and harbors for repairs, and served as a refuge where ships could wait out unfavorable weather. One significant result was the colonization of Mozambique by the Portuguese crown. Rewards In December 1499, Vasco da Gama was rewarded by King Manuel I of Portugal with the town of Sines as a hereditary fief. This turned out to be a rather complicated affair, for Sines still belonged to the Order of Santiago. On the face of it, it should not have been a problem for Jorge de Lencaster, the master of the order, to endorse the reward a euro after all, Gama was a Santiago knight, one of their own, and a close associate of Lencaster himself. But the fact that Sainz was awarded by the king's hand, provoked Lancaster to refuse out of principle a euro lest it encourage the king to make other donations of the order's properties. Gama would spend the next few years attempting to take hold of Sainz a euro an effort which would estrange him from Lancaster and eventually prompt Gama to abandon his beloved order of Santiago, switching over to the rival order of Christ in 1507. In the meantime, Gama made do with a substantial hereditary royal pension of 300,000 reis. He was awarded the noble title of Dom in perpetuity for himself, his siblings and their descendants. On January 30, 1502, Vasco da Gama was awarded the title of Almirante dos Mares de Arabia, Persia, India e de todo o Oriente Euro an overwrought title reminiscent of the ornate Castilian title borne by Christopher Columbus another royal letter dated October 1501, gave Vasco da Gama the personal right to intervene and exercise a determining role on any future India-bound fleet. Around 1501, Vasco da Gama married Caterina de Atida, daughter of Lvaro de Atida, the Alcade Marcubdar of Alva, and a prominent nobleman connected by kinship with a powerful Omeda family. Second Voyage The follow-up expedition the second Indian Armada launched in 1500, 
was placed under the command Pedro Lvares Cabral, with the mission of making a treaty with the Zamorin of Calicut and setting up a Portuguese factory in the city. However, Cabral entered into a conflict with the local Arab merchant guilds, with the result that the Portuguese factory was overrun in a riot and up to 70 Portuguese killed. Cabral blamed the Zamorin for the incident and bombarded the city. Thus war broke out between Portugal and Calicut. Vasco da Gama invoked his royal letter to take command of the 4th Indian Armada, scheduled to set out in 1502, with the explicit aim of taking revenge upon the Zamorin and force him to submit to Portuguese terms. The heavily armed fleet of 15 ships and 800 men left Lisbon on February 12, 1502. It was followed in April by another squadron of five ships led by his cousin, Estevar Pondo da Gama, which caught up to them in the Indian Ocean. The Fourth Armada was a veritable Gama family affair. Two of his maternal uncles, Vicente Sodra Copyright and Brahe Sodra Copyright, were pre-designated to command an Indian Ocean naval patrol, while brothers-in-law Dalvaro de Atalade and Lopo Mendes de Vasconcelos captained ships in the main fleet. Along the way, on the outgoing voyage, Gama's fleet opened contact with the East African gold trading port of Sofla, and reduced the Sultanate of Kilwa to tribute, extracting a substantial sum of gold. On reaching India in October 1502, Gama's fleet set about capturing any Arab vessel he came across in Indian waters, most notoriously the Miri, a pilgrim ship from Mecca, whose passengers he had massacred in open water. He then appeared before Calicut, demanding redress for the treatment meted out to Cabral. While the Zamorin was willing to sign a new treaty, Gama made a preposterous call to the Hindu king to expel all Muslims from Calicut before beginning negotiations, which was naturally turned down. The Portuguese fleet then bombarded the city for nearly two days from the seashore, severely damaging the unfortified city. He also captured several rice vessels and barbarously cut off the crew's hands, ears and noses, dispatching them with an insulting note to the Zamorin. The violent treatment meted out by Gama quickly brought trade along the Malabar coast of India, upon which Calicut depended, to a standstill. But the Zamorin nonetheless refused to submit to Portuguese terms, and even ventured to hire a fleet of strong warships to challenge Gama's armada. Gama loaded up with spices at Cochin and Cananor, small nearby kingdoms, half vassal and half at war with the Zamorin, whose alliances had been secured by prior Portuguese fleets. The Fourth Armada left India in early 1503. Gama left behind a small squadron of caravels, under the command of his uncle, Vicente Sodra Copyright, to patrol the Indian coast, continue harassing Calicut shipping and protect the Portuguese factories at Cochin and Cananor from the Zamorin's inevitable reprisals. Vasco da Gama arrived back in Portugal in September 1503, effectively having failed in his mission to bring the Zamorin to submission. This failure, and the subsequent more galling failure of his uncle Vicente Sodra copyright to protect the Portuguese factory in Cochin, probably counted against any further rewards. When the Portuguese King Manuel I of Portugal decided to appoint the first governor and viceroy of Portuguese India in 1505, Vasco da Gama was conspicuously overlooked, and the post given to D. Francisco de Almeida. Pilgrim ship incident, on his second voyage, Vasco da Gama inflicted acts of cruelty upon competing traders and local inhabitants, which sealed his notoriety in India. During his second voyage to Calicut, da Gama intercepted a ship of Muslim pilgrims at Madeira traveling from Calicut to Mecca. Described in detail by eyewitness Toma Copyright Lopes and chronicler Gaspar Correa as one that is unequaled in cold-blooded cruelty, da Gama looted the ship with over 400 pilgrims on board including 50 women, locked in the passengers, the owner and an ambassador from Egypt and burned them to death. They offered their wealth which could ransom all the Christian slaves in the kingdom of Fez and much more but were not spared. Dargama looked on through the porthole and saw the women bringing up their gold and jewels and holding up their babies to beg for mercy. After demanding the expulsion of Muslims from Calicut to the Hindu Zamorin, the latter sent the high priest Talar Pen and Nambuadiri for talks. Dargama called him a spy ordered the priest's lips and ears to be cut off and after sewing a pair of dog's ears to his head, sent him away. Interlude 
For the next two decades, Vasco da Gama lived out a quiet life, unwelcome in the royal court and sidelined from Indian affairs. His attempts to return to the favor of Manuel I, yielded little. Almeida, the larger-than-life Afonso de Albuquerque and, later on, Albergaria and Sequera, were the king's preferred point men for India. After Ferdinand Magellan defected to the crown of Castile in 1518, Vasco da Gama threatened to do the same, prompting the king to undertake steps to retain him in Portugal and avoid the embarrassment of losing his own Admiral of the Indies to Spain. In 1519, after years of ignoring his petitions, King Manuel I finally hurried to give Vasco da Gama a feudal title, appointing him the first Count of Vidigueira, a count title created by a royal decree issued in a Permalvora on December 29, after a complicated agreement with Dom Jaime, Duke of Braganza, who ceded him on payment the towns of Vidigueira and Vila dos Frades. The decree granted Vasco da Gama and his heirs all the revenues and privileges related, thus establishing da Gama as the first Portuguese count who was not born with royal blood. Third Voyage After the death of King Manuel I in late 1521, his son and successor, King John III of Portugal set about reviewing the Portuguese government overseas. Turning away from the old Albuquerque clique, John III looked for a fresh start. Vasco da Gama re-emerged from his political wilderness as an important advisor to the new king's appointments and strategy. Seeing the new Spanish threat to the Maluku Islands as the priority, Vasco da Gama advised against the obsession with Arabia that had pervaded much of the Manilan period, and continued to be the dominant concern of de de Meneses, then governor of Portuguese India. Meneses also turned out to be incompetent and corrupt, subject to numerous complaints. As a result, John III decided to appoint Vasco da Gama himself to replace Meneses, confident that the magic of the his name and memory of his deeds might better impress his authority on Portuguese India, and manage the transition to a new government and new strategy. By his appointment letter of February 1524, John III granted Vasco da Gama the privileged title of Viceroy, being only the second Portuguese governor to enjoy that title. His second son, Estevar Poundo da Gama was simultaneously appointed Capita Poundo Mordu Marda and Dia, to replace de Hort's brother, Luis de Meneses. As a final condition, Gama secured from John III of Portugal the commitment to appoint all his sons successively as Portuguese captains of Malacca. Setting out in April 1524, with a fleet of 14 ships, Vasco da Gama took as his flagship the famous large carrack Santa Catarina do Monte Sinai on her last journey to India, along with two of his sons, Estevar Poundo and Paulo. After a troubled journey, he arrived in India in September. Vasco da Gama immediately invoked his high vice-regent powers to impose a new order in Portuguese India, replacing all the old officials with his own appointments. But Gama contracted malaria not long after arriving, and died in the city of Cochin on Christmas Eve in 1524, three months after his arrival. As per royal instructions, Gama was succeeded as governor of India by one of the captains who had come with him, Enrique de Meneses. Vasco's sons Estevar Poundo and Paulo immediately lost their posts and joined the returning fleet of early 1525. Vasco da Gama's body was first buried at St. Francis Church, which was located at Fort Quachai in the city of Quachai, but his remains were returned to Portugal in 1539. The body of Vasco da Gama was reinterred in Vidigueira in a casket decorated with gold and jewels. The monastery of the Hieronymites, in Bela Copyright M, which would become the necropolis of the Portuguese royal dynasty of Obisbisha, was erected in the early 1500s near the launch point of Vasco da Gama's first journey, and its construction funded by a tax on the profits of the yearly Portuguese Indian armadas. In 1880, the remains of Vasco da Gama and the poet Lua Estacama Micronis, were translated to new carved tombs in the nave of the monastery's church, only a few meters away from the tombs of the kings Manuel I and John III whom Gama had served. Ancestry, Marriage and Issue Vasco da Gama and his wife, Caterina de Atida, had six sons and one daughter, Dom Francisco da Gama, 
who inherited his father's titles as second Count of Vidaguera and the second Admiral of the Seas of India, Arabia and Persia. He remained in Portugal. Dom Esteva Pound Odar Gama, after his abortive 1524 term as Indian patrol captain, he was appointed for a three-year term as captain of Malacca, serving from 1534 to 1539. He was subsequently appointed as the 11th Governor of India from 1540 to 1542. Dom Paulo da Gama, captain of Malacca in 1533-34, killed in a naval action off Malacca. Dom Christopher Pound o da Gama, captain of Malacca fleet from 1538 to 1540. Nominated to succeed in Malacca, but executed by Ahmad ibn Ibrahim during the Ethiopian Adal War in 1542. Dom Pedro da Silva da Gama, appointed captain of Malacca from 1548 to 1552. Doma Elvira Dawa da Gama appointed captain of Malacca fleet in the 1540s, captain of Malacca itself from 1552 to 1554. Doma Isabel Dawa da Gama, only daughter, married Ignacio de Noronha, son of the first Count of Linhas. His male line issue became extinct in 1747 though the title went through female line. Titles, styles, and honors, over his numerous years serving the Portuguese crown, da Gama was rewarded with many different titles, distinctions, and offices, Admiral of the Seas of Arabia, Persia, India and all the Orient Euro title as Chief of the Portuguese Indian Armadas, Second Viceroy of India Euro title of office as Colonial Head of Portuguese India. First Count of Vidaguera a Euro title of Portuguese nobility, legacy. As much as anyone after Henry the Navigator, Vasco da Gama was responsible for Portugal's success as an early colonizing power. Beside the fact of the first voyage itself, it was his astute mix of politics and war on the other side of the world that placed Portugal in a prominent position in Indian Ocean trade. Following da Gama's initial voyage, the Portuguese crown realized that securing outposts on the eastern coast of Africa would prove vital to maintaining national trade routes to the Far East. The Portuguese national epic, the Lusidas of Luas Vaz de Cama Micronis, largely concerns Vasco da Gama's voyages. The 1865 Grand Opera L'Africaine, Opa Copyright Ra en Acts, composed by Giacomo Mabir from a libretto by Eugene Scribe, prominently includes the character of Vasco da Gama. The events depicted, however, are fictitious. Mabir's working title for the opera was Vasco da Gama. A 1989 production of the opera by the San Francisco Opera featured noted tenor Placido Domingo in the role of da Gama. The 19th century composer Louis Albert Bourgault du Caudray composed an eponymous 1872 opera based on da Gama's life and exploits at sea. The port city of Vasco da Gama in Goa is named after him, as is the crater Vasco da Gama on the moon. There are three football clubs in Brazil and Vasco Sports Club in Goa that were also named after him. There exists a church in Quachai, Kerala called Vasco da Gama Church, and a private residence on the island of St. Helena. The suburb of Vasco in Cape Town also honors him. A few places in Lisbon's Parque das Nor Picavolt Micronas are named after the explorer, such as the Vasco da Gama Bridge, Vasco da Gama Tower and the Centro Comercial Vasco da Gama Shopping Center. The Ocean Rio in the Parque das Nor Picavolt Micronas has a mascot of a cartoon diver with the name of Vasco, who is named after the explorer. Vasco da Gama was the only explorer on the final pool of Os Grandes Portugueses. Although the final shortlist featured other Age of Discovery related people, they were not actually explorers nor navigators for any matter. The Portuguese Navy has a class of frigates named after him. There are three Vasco da Gama class frigates in total, of which the first one also bears his name. South African musician Hugh Marsakila recorded an anti colonialist song entitled Vasco da Gama, which contains the lyrics Vasco da Gama was no friend of mine. He later recorded another version of this song under the name Colonial Man. Vasco da Gama appears as an antagonist in the Indian film Urumi. The film, directed by acclaimed cinematographer Santosh Sivan, depicts a failed assassination attempt on da Gama by an Indian. See also, 
Chronology of European Exploration of Asia, Count of Vidicuera, Portuguese Indian Armadas, Portuguese India, Spice Trade, References, Notes. Sources, Ames, Glenn J. Vasco da Gama, Renaissance Crusader. Longman. ISBN A0-321-09282-1A, Ames, Glenn J. The Globe Encompassed, The Age of European Discovery, 1500 to Euro 1700. Prentice Hall. ISBN A978-0-13-193375. Castanhoso, M. de dos Fatos de D. Cristóvão da Gama em Ethiopia Lisbon, Imprensa Nacional Online, Correa, Gaspar. The Three Voyages of Vasco da Gama, and His Vice Royalty. Adamant Media Corporation. ISBN A1-4021-9543-5 A facsimile reprint of an 1869 edition by the Haklu Society, London. Disney, Anthony. Emily Booth. The Indian Ocean in World History. New Delhi and New York, Oxford University Press. Fernandez Armesto, Felipe. Civilizations. Basingstoke and Oxford, UK Macmillan. ISBN A0-7432-0248-1A, Fernandez Armesto, Felipe. Pathfinders. A Global History of Exploration W. W. Norton PPA 177 A Euro 181. ISBN A 978-0-393-06259-5A, Jane, Kingsley Garland. Vasco da Gama and his successors 1460-1580. London, England, Muthan and Co. Ltd. ISBN A 978-0-548-00895-9 Panica, K. M. Asia and Western Dominance, A Survey of the Vasco da Gama Epoch of Asian History, 1498 to Euro 1945. London, Allen and Unwin. Asina B. O. 100 Q5 T6 X6A, Ravenstein, E. G. Ed and Trans A Journal of the First Voyage of Vasco da Gama. 1497 a Euro 1499. London, the Clue Society A, Russell Wood, AJRA World on the Move, The Portuguese in Africa, Asia, and America, 1415 a Euro 1808. Macmillan. ISBN A 978 0 312-09427-0A, Subramaniam, Sanjay. The Career and Legend of Vasco da Gama. Cambridge University Press. ISBN A 978 0 521 47072 8 Teixeira de Araga Pando, A.C. Vasco da Gama e Avidiguera, Um Estudo Histórico. Lisbon, Sociedade de Geografia de Lisboa Online, Toll, George Makepeace. Vasco da Gama, His Voyages and Adventures. Boston, Lothrop. Leon Shepherder, External Links, Vasco da Gama's Round Africa to India, Fordham.edu, Vasco da Gama Web Tutorial with Animated Maps, Er Calgary Car.